All right, here we go. All right, back to share screen and uh, that share. Okay, admit presenter mode. All right, welcome everybody. This is our December meeting. Um, there we go. Um, the last meeting of the year for Boston. Um, so wel welcome aboard. And uh, let's just start out with doing some announcements here for everybody. Uh, if you're a first timer, welcome. Uh, glad to have you on board and to our members. Thank you for being a supporting member of everything. And uh, we have another great meeting in store tonight. Uh, I just want to start off with our liability disclosure uh, that Boston Rea assumes no liability or responsibility for the outcome of any real estate transaction, decision, or any other action that any Boston Rea member or visitor enters into as a result of attending any meeting, listening to any guest speaker, or talking to a Boston Rea member, guest, visitor, or person. Basically, we're saying we want you to do your research on anything that you hear from the meeting and make your own decision. Uh, all we do is present information to you and you do it with what you may. Um, but uh, you know, we have done our best to verify all information, but please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions with anybody else uh, from within in the meeting. So if you aren't aware, uh, Boston Real Estate Investors Association is the most active real estate community in New England. We have a lot of deal flow going on. We have a lot, a lot of networking and we are number one in education and the biggest investor resource. Uh, the, the Boston Rea is the fifth largest uh, chapter of the National Real Estate Investors Association in the United States. So we have a lot that we bring to you through uh, not only our group, but our national association. Um, and I just do want to make mention that you will see a chat bar in the side. Uh, we invite you to put your details in that. If you have a have, need, or want that you want to get to other members, uh, you know, please you know, chat between yourselves in that chat bar. Please remember to put your phone number and email address, how they can get a hold of you if you have something or need to sell something. Um, if uh, we'll talk about our in-person networking um, and shortly, but as I mentioned, uh, the National RIA is the largest trade association of real estate investors in the United States. Uh, we have major partners and vendors that offer us special discounts, cash back, uh, pricing, et cetera, that you won't get any, any anywhere else. So you know, by becoming a member of the Boston uh, chapter of the National Area, you also get free membership into, well, I should say it includes your membership into uh, the National Real Estate Investing Association. So we're bringing you benefits both locally and nationally. And we'll talk about a few of our um, partners as we go on to the meeting. Uh, we have our investor-friendly realtor, Sarah Abraham. Uh, Sarah, are you going to do a market update tonight, or you can just talk generally about what, what you're seeing in the market in the past month? Uh, I, I can, if there is time, I can. Because yeah, let's, not, let's, let's, no let's hit on the market update, just what you're seeing. And, okay. uh, you know, for those who don't know, Sarah, Sarah's been with Boston Rea for quite a few years now. And uh, if you don't have an agent representing you on the buyer side, um, please call or Sarah. Or the seller side. <laughs> or the seller side, I just want to get there. Uh, on the buyer side, she is an expert in helping investors find great deals. And on the seller side, she's also an expert in getting your house sold fast and getting the maximum price out of it. So Sarah works both sellers and buyers, and she is investor friendly, which means she's not afraid to make offers for you. Uh, and she has a lot of advice she can give you. So without further ado, I'm going to let Sarah take this away for the market update. Thanks, I'll Duncan. Stop my, uh, do you need your screen? or? Yes. I definitely okay. I stopped my share and oh, there you go. Thank you. I think I have it here and I think you can see my screen. Yes. Okay. Yes. We can see your screen. Okay, cool. All right. So, uh, you know, just in case you don't know, so this is a market update, but this is something is done daily. So I still do take it. Uh, just as a reflection on the day, uh, I usually, we usually do this on three counties. Uh, Middlesex, Essex, and Suffolk counties. That's where I mainly work. Uh, and um, this was from last month, November, right? Um, interest were over 
uh, you know, total homes on the market was a little lower than what they were last week, last year, contingent back on the market and price changes was really, really high. Um, when we come to this month, um, even though it says 744, it's not as accurate because we're going to see in the weekly uh, report with the with the interest rates. But I mean, it's still a reflection that it has gone down. Um, and, you know, homes still below when they, you know, what they were last year, same comes to contingent and back on the market, but the price changes are, are a lot less than they were last month. And this is great to see, uh, definitely. So, um, you know, interest rates last month, this is a weekly report. Uh, we're, we're, they did wear over the seven, but let's say based on this one, it was 776. Now we're, you know, we're a lot down in just one month. If this is a weekly thing, but I mean, if, even if I just look at that, like I remember during this week, it went as low as 675, uh, which is excellent to see. Um, uh, and I love very, very much to see what Sam Hotter is saying because he's the chief economist of Freddie Mac. Uh, he's saying the 30 years uh, fixed rate mortgage average near 7% this week, down from nearly 7.8% just six weeks ago. When rates began to rapidly drop, purchase applications rebounded initially. Uh, but this improvement in demand diminished this last week. Although the low, these lower rates remain a welcome relief, it is clear they will have to further drop to more consistently uh, reinvigorate demand. So uh, so basically what we're seeing right now, so this is excellent news. Let me just stop my sharing very quick. Okay. I think I think um, I stopped sharing my screen, yes? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's definitely fantastic news because what happened is, you know, we're seeing a lot less, like the numbers of the homes that have price changes, price drops that went down, people with the interest rates uh, going down, people are getting more approval. Uh, their purchase power is higher. They are more willing to uh, overbid. Not nothing crazy, but I mean, there is movement in the market that you know it was a lot less over the past couple months. Uh, it's great to see it. That's completely against what we were expecting. Uh, you know, expectations were in November, December, and January that they will increase the interest rates again. Uh, I really, really hope that it continues to go down. I'd love to see it in the sixes again. Uh, but it, this is definitely great news for buyers and sellers. And awesome. that kind of wraps it up. So, um, Sarah, can you tell me, uh, you're seeing uh, still a lot of movement in the marketplace. Uh, are you seeing that under a certain price point or is it pretty consistent at all price points? Uh, are the house, how many days on the market are the majority of the houses right now? It's definitely, you know, when you go lower, like in the, in the lower price point, there is more competition just because there is more people approved. So by nature, you have more people than if you were to go like, you know, in the 700 range and higher. Uh, mm -hmm. As you go higher, you know, it's less, you know, it's less pull basically. Uh, but, you know, but what we're seeing is if, a, if you know, if a house is marked, is priced really, really nice, really correct, it goes still. But there are houses that do sit on the market. Yeah. Are, are you seeing any increase in movement based on only having a the lower FHA minimum requirement um, drop now? Are you talking about the 5%, the new 5%? Right. Yes, this is definitely helping a lot of people to get into home ownership. Uh, it, it's it's great for like two to four units. Uh, their, their catch is that you have to be an owner occupant. So, mm -hmm. and a lot of people would like, you know, they were like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that. I live in one unit and just, you know, build equity and be out in a year or something because you're not required to live there for like very long time. So yeah, and this is definitely helping. Are you seeing a lot in two and uh, five units on the market right now? Or are they, um, is there a lack of inventory in that side of things? They they do come, you know, five and above, they do come. Um, but I want to say like, is not as, as many of them as like the two and three, even the four. 
And this is just because of the nature of it. I don't think there is a lot of them comparing to the two, three, and four units. Okay. Um, and, and any other trends that you're seeing where investors should be looking right now for the best deals? Um, I mean, you know, um, people are buying, you know, single family, multifamily. I mean, if you're working on a project, I would definitely get it out because like it's you're just still getting multiple offers in, in some cases, not crazy, but in certain mm -hmm. cases, yes, we do get like four, five, six. You and literally just seeing, need you. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing a lot of cash offers versus financing offers now or has that okay. sort of played out cash offers they definitely like were like about 30 percent of the offers those were okay. more when interest rates were even higher okay. um because there's just like less competition for them but cash offers still there like we always see cash offers yes Okay. So what I'm hearing though, is that the market is still buoyant. There's still buyers. There's still deals out there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just consistently um, hunting those deals, deals down mm -hmm. and having your money ready to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Sarah. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I'll go back to taking your screen away and uh, go back to the uh, slide. So, so uh, once again, Sarah, do you want to share your details? I put them up there on the screen. Anything else you want to say about your services? Uh, no, I'm just licensed in Mass and New Hampshire. You can uh, check my website. Uh, it's very easy. www.mass to New Hampshire Homes. It's ma to nhhomes.com. Very simple, okay. very easy. I have some stuff there. Might help you, might benefit you. Um, can search homes. You can, you know, you can take awesome. take a and look there. You got a good newsletter you put out once a month too, if they want to grab that. Yep. Yep. Okay. Super. Thank you, Sarah. All right. So just moving on uh, from the market update, um, we have many, many local business partners, a lot of money lenders. Uh, you know, in the old days, the excuse was they don't have money to do deals. Well, there's so much money out there right now, guys. It's it's actually ridiculous. It's people just throwing money at you basically to get a part of your deal. Um, so I, I uh, implore you to uh, go into our members area, our investor resources, and look at our different, you know, we have hard money, we have private money, we have uh, regular bank uh, money, um, we have um, short-term uh, flipping money, uh, which you can get a pre proof of funds at quickturnmoney.com. It gives you an instantaneous uh, proof of funds letter so you can get out there and um, make offers. So uh, please check out our money partners. This should, you know, money should not be a hindrance to you going out and getting a deal. And I would suggest to speak to all of them. They all have different uh, rules uh, how and how they do things, uh, but they're all very helpful. They'll help you structure deals and they'll show you the best way forward. Uh, it may even help you maybe even come up with some creative offers, you know, using their money too. So, um, you know, check out our money lenders in there. Uh, for those who like in-person networking, uh, working, uh, we have a group uh, that meets the first Monday of the month from 6 to 8 p.m. You just missed it uh, at the Stellwagen Beer Company in Marshfield, Massachusetts. Um, but there, you know, we, we it, it's just everybody getting together for a beer, having, you know, talking, networking and having a bit of fun. It's ten dollars to get in. Um, but if you like the real person thing, uh, we're down on the South shore and in the new year, we'll be having some other fun venues opening up for, uh, for networking. Um, our new RIA benefit, if you weren't, uh, here last week or last month, I should say, uh, is our vendor VIP. So this is our have needs and want, uh, software on steroids. So, uh, you know, if you have your money lender or you're a plumber or electrician, you have any sort of service or product that you want to get in front of, uh, over 5,000 real estate investors or other people in the marketplace, um, please get your free sign up link from inside our members area and put yourself on that list so we can push it out to the entire uh, Boston RIA and beyond. And that's our vendor VIP benefit.
Um, but it, what it comes down to, guys, if you're serious about real estate investing, you need to be part of a crowd that has like-minded goals, has the resources and everything you really need to make money. And that's about joining the Boston RIA tonight. Um, and we include an all-star membership. You know, when we have our big events, you get uh, you get free entrance to that subgroup meetings. You get involved in our uh, Home Depot preferred pricing and 2% cash back. We have so many membership benefits that I'll just show you a slide with so many of them. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a no brainer really to join because you'll, you'll save and make more money than uh, the cost of the membership ourselves. And if you're, uh, if after I go through these slides, you know, just text Kelly, she'll give you her number in the chat bar. And she'll get you sorted out with membership. Um, but you really got to dig in to becoming a member, be a sport, be a player, and, and learn the game. So it really comes down to joining tonight. These are just some of our um, member benefits that we have from uh, great offers on uh, unoccupied insurance, you know, up to 50% off at Home Depot, Office Max, uh, Rent Perfect. Um, let them do your credit checks. Um, for next to nothing, uh, we have our local monitor, uh, market monitor. Um, we have our hammers and software, which all the if you're doing rehabs, it will take all your receipts, puts it into QuickBooks for you. Really super cool software. Uh, REI Pro is our lead generation software we get, so you'll, you're never going to be at a shortage of opportunities that you're not finding on the MLS. This is for off-market deals, our REI lead pro software. Uh, we're really going to talk about Home Depot again tonight, just very briefly, because our members get preferred pricing better than uh, contractors get. Plus, we get cash back on that. So again, you're going to hear from Sarah about our Home Depot program uh, shortly. Uh, but our yearly membership is $280 per year for a single person and $400 for two of you, couples, partners, or whatever. Uh, you text Kelly at 864-906-4111 for more info to join, and she'll get you sorted out. Um, so I'm actually going to turn it over to you, Sarah, real quick to talk about Home Depot. Uh, stop my share. Um, and uh, you just want to give them a brief overview of that, sir? Absolutely. Um, so I think you can see my screen now again. Yes, good. All right, so uh, welcome again. Uh, just like Duncan was saying, Home Depot uh, gives our our members uh, exclusive benefits, makes it no brainer to join Boston right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go over this. Um, Home Depot, they offer like, you know, uh, a rewards program. Just think of it like uh, CVS or a stop and shop or anything that you, uh, you know, you, the more you buy with them, the more discounts and rebates they give you. Uh, even though uh, Home Depot Pro Extra, they do have uh, they're like their own thing. Uh, Duncan and Kelly negotiated extra discounts only exclusive for our members. Um, so our members, they get 2% rebate by annually on all purchases uh, with, a with a spend of $5,000 as a minimum spend per period. So they have fixed rebate periods January 1st. So it's just next month is going to be the start of the uh, new period. And it goes for six months until June 30th. And then the new uh, one starts on July 1st until the end of the year. And normally you get, um, you know, anything that's under $1,000, you get a, a Home Depot gift card. A thousand or more, they mail you a check. Uh, and normally the, those, you know, the gift cards or the checks get mailed out within 60 days from the closing cycle of uh, of each, uh, you know, like from June 30th, count 60 days, and then you should expect, uh, you know, your, your rebate or, you know, end of the year within 60 days, then you get your rebate. So it's very important to make sure your mailing address is up to date so you wouldn't for you know miss on your rebates. Uh, also, Bossaria members, they started the gold tier. Uh, and what that means, they qualify for 20% off paint without meeting the rebate minimum. So let's say you signed up tonight and you're working on a project that only needs paint right now. That's all you need, right? You don't have to worry about the $5,000. Uh, what you do is that you um, 
so so with this with this program just again think of it like cvs what you do is that you, you enter your phone number and uh you know at the checkout at the pin pad right so this is this is exactly the same so you uh, enter your phone number on the pin pad before you swipe your card and um basically with this program also they make you register a payment method like it could be credit card it could be uh, a reloadable gift card, a checking account, any of that. So if you pay with one of these registered uh, payments, payment methods, you get 22%. You get 20% at the checkout, and then you get that 2% that gets accumulated towards, you know, your 5,000 minimum spent. So, and you can track that up to 24 months. Uh, the 20% of paint are applicable to paint stains and primer of a gallon or more doesn't apply to uh to uh quartz or spray or anything. Uh also our members can get up to 20% of select hand and bay kitchen and bath cabinets if you buy 10 or more cabinets in a single transaction. And how it works is that you get 10% uh from National RIA and 10% from Home Depot. And both uh coupons are stackable with any other store discounts going on at the same time. So you at least guarantee 20% um you know at the checkout and of course you know when you pay with a registered payment method then you, you accumulate that uh two percent and if you have if they have any more discounts you get that on top too a uh, volume pricing program or bid room uh this is another way a great way to actually save money uh how it works is that they uh require you to have a um uh, a list of large items that's gonna cost $1,500 or more in a single transaction. Uh, bring your list to the pro desk, have them prepare a quote for you. After that, have them send it to the bid room. Uh, and then within a few minutes, it's gonna come back to you with any applied discounts uh, for up to 15%. Uh, and again, if you pay with a registered card, you get all the way up to 15% at the checkout, and then you get the 2% accumulated uh, in the form of a rebate gift card or a check at the end of the six months. Uh, the only thing that I wouldn't send through the bedroom is the paint because you just get a better deal with the 20%. Um, and if all that was not enough for you to just like really jump on this, maybe numbers would. So, and, um, so that Duncan updates these numbers every six months. Um, uh, so so what happened like in the Home Depot in the past six months paid the chapter members, uh, you know, nearly six hundred thousand dollars to to the members average rebate per member, almost fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, so that's alone. Like if Duncan was saying two eighty for a single member, like in just one cycle, you can get like uh, membership for like, I don't know, five, six years. Uh, in just one cycle, if you like, if you buy there, if you have all of your projects done through Home Depot and you buy that, it's a no-brainer. Uh, I would highly encourage you to give Kelly a call, uh, take a picture of the, you know, of her number, uh, give her a call, just tell her I would love to sign up today, and or verify if you don't know, um, you know, if your membership is up or something, call her and she's going to take care of you once uh, you're once you're all done. Uh, I'll schedule a time with you and then we do it together. It's very simple. It uh, doesn't take time. Uh, we do it directly from the Home Depot. I'm not like employee of Home Depot or anything. We do it directly from their website. It doesn't take any time. Uh, thank you so much. And I'll give this uh, screen back to you, Duncan. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're probably... All right, um, let's, let me get back here because we'll just be on this for one second. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, our newest uh, benefit uh, with an IRA group uh, called Camaplan. Uh, William Mucker, uh, he'll be introducing himself, telling more about himself. But, you know, this is the time of year that if you haven't got your IRA set up or you're looking at how you can maximize it, make more money with it, you know, uh, just how to better invest with your own IRA. Uh, now, now's the time. 
So I'm, I'm going to turn this over to um, William and uh, just dig right into this. And what we'll do is he'll he'll be chatting for about uh, 60 minutes. If you have any questions, uh, if you'll just hold them to the end, uh, you're free to either put those questions into the uh, chat or you can use the little hand icon and we will uh, call on you from if your hand is raised. So I'm going to stop the share and hand it over to William at this point in time. And uh, William, are you there? Yep. Thank you so much, Duncan. Um, a huge thank you to Duncan and the team at Boston Rhea for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. I hope everybody's having a good evening so far. Let me just get my slides up. Hope everybody can see that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak and thank you to the, the members that showed up today um, and lending your ears for a few minutes. Uh, my name is William Mucker. I'm a client executive at Camaplan. I've been in with the business for seven years. I'm also a licensed real estate agent. Um, and what we're here to speak about today is the basics of self-direction. Before we do get started, I have a disclosure to go through. Everything in this presentation is strictly for educational purposes. Camaplan is a neutral third party administrator of self-directed IRAs. We are not attorneys, CPAs, brokers, financial advisors, or anything along the lines of that. If you need, if it comes to the time where you need advice in any one of those fields, we highly recommend you speak with your team of professionals. We're more than hot, happy to join that dialogue with your team of professionals and join that conversation to make sure the investment process is quick and seamless. Uh, we do not sell anything at Camo Plan, nor do we endorse any products. We will never call you about the next best investment opportunity. We always believe that you should do your own due diligence, whether you're investing with your retirement funds or otherwise. Um, and yeah, so what we're going to go over today are the basics of self-direction. So, and I'll talk about the company itself towards the end of the presentation. We have a good offer for you as well. So what we're, go we're going to go over today is what is a self-directed IRA? What types of accounts can be self-directed? What types of investments you can make out of your self-directed IRA? What types of investments you cannot make out of your self-directed IRA? How the process works. And we'll also talk about some tax considerations towards the end as well. So the big question, I help people all the time open up an accounts, help them through the application. The first question I get, because it's the first question on the application is why isn't there an option that says self-directed IRA? So self-directed is, is just an adjective. All of the accounts that came up plan are self-directed. What that means is you're taking your, taking your money off out of the casino of Wall Street and putting it into alternative investments, tangible investments. The accounts you actually open up at Camo Plan are traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, SEP IRAs, simple IRAs. And we'll go over some more of those in the next slide. All the same rules apply, contributions, distributions, investments, all the same rules apply to the accounts at Camo Plan as they do with Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab, and all of that. So you might go to one of those custodians and say, and they might tell you, you have a self-directed IRA, but what they mean is you can direct your investment into anything off of this list with a truly self-directed IRA, like the ones at Camo plan, there is no list. You find the investment that is right for you. Uh, we help facilitate the transaction and then you can rinse and repeat. So some benefits, this is a quote from a longtime client investing in what, you know, understand and can control Versus, versus using hope as your strategy. Like I said, Wall Street's a casino. A lot of people think that you have to have your retirement funds tied to it, when in reality, that's not the case. You can invest into alternative investments like the investments you learn every day or every month at Boston Rhea and the, the real estate and other investments that you capitalize off of. You can do the same thing within your self-directed IRA. And we're gonna talk about how. So what types of accounts can be self-directed? We went over a few of them in the, in the previous slide, but you have two buckets. You have your tax deferred bucket, you have your tax free bucket. On the tax deferred end, you have your traditional IRA. It says spousal IRA, but that also applies to tax free. That just means if you have a working spouse and a non-working spouse, the working spouse can contribute on behalf of the non-working spouse, but that can be traditional or Roth. And then you have employer plans on the tax deferred side, like the SEP IRA, Simplified Employee Pension, and the Simple IRA or Savings Incentives Match Plan for employers. Um, then you have your 401ks, your defined benefit plans, and your defined contribution plans on that end. That's the tax deferred side. So that means when you make your contributions, they're not taxed. So 
Um, that's the benefit of the tax deferred side. Years down the line, though, when you do go to take the, the funds out of the account at a qualified age, those distributions are taxed. Now, on the tax-free side or the Roth side, you have the exact opposite. So the contributions that you put into the account are taxed. However, years down the line, all of the earnings and, and your initial contributions, when you go to take those funds out at a qualified age, that's tax-free, money in your pocket. So we like to say, would you rather pay the taxes on the seed or on the crop? With the Roth IRA, you're paying on the seed, where as a tax deferred IRA, you're paying on the crop. So um, just to go over the accounts in this, the tax-free side, you have your Roth IRA, you have your health savings account, which is the only account of its type where the contributions are actually tax deferred. And then the distributions are tax-free for a qualified medical expense. Not a lot of people know that. So it's a good, uh, good account to, to get more familiar with. We have the edu educational savings account or the Coverdell, and then you have your Roth portions of those 401ks I mentioned earlier. Some plans will allow you to make Roth contributions um, to make those tax-free contributions. Here are some differences between the 401ks and the self-directed IRAs. Uh, there's a lot of similarities. The main differences are the contribution limits are often a lot different depending on the type of accounts you set up. Um, you can take loans from 401ks which are $50,000 or 50% of the account value, whichever of that number is less, um, where you can't take loans from an IRA. And lastly, UDFI rules do not apply to solo 401ks where they do to IRAs. UDFI stands for Unrelated Debt Financed Income. That's something to talk over the tax professional. And we'll talk about a little at the end of the, the presentation as well. So those are the main differences between the self-directed IRA and the solo 401ks. We offer both of them, of course. Here we have a nice graph about the different avenues of investments and what you get to keep. So let's say you earn $100,000. Out of that, what do you get to keep? So with your w W-2 income, you make $100,000. In this scenario, you're at about a 40% tax bracket. You're paying federal, state, local, Social Security, Medicare. Your employer is paying taxes. Um, at this, in this scenario, it's 40%. So out of that $100,000, $40,000 goes to the IRS and to Uncle Sam to help them keep, keep the lights on. You only get to keep $60,000. Then you have your passive income, which is taxed a little bit more leniently. Um, whereas in this situation, your, your rent, royalties, interest, dividend payments, and capital gains. In this scenario, it's 25%. So out of that $100,000 that you made, you're only keeping $75,000 and paying out $25,000. Lastly, at the bottom, you have both the tax deferred and traditional accounts, like we mentioned, and the tax free or Roth accounts. Both of those, that $100,000 you keep initially. However, there's an asterisk next to that tax deferred account, like we mentioned earlier, because when you go to take that, take out that $100,000 at the end, you're going to get taxed on that $100,000. Where when you go to take out that Roth IRA at a qualified age, that $100,000 out of the Roth IRA, that's cash, that's tax free cash in your pocket. So we're a little bit partial to the Roth IRAs for a lot of reasons. And you can open them up for your children. The only requirement that you need um, to get started with a Roth IRA or any IRA in general is to have earned income. And I've seen people um, pay, their, pay their children that are a few months old, modeling fees, wrap their cars and pictures of their children, pay them a, pay them a fee, and then they can, they can use that income to contribute to a Roth IRA. I wish my parents started me off with a Roth IRA. I probably wouldn't be speaking here today because I the things I've seen there are some huge Roth IRAs for, for some youngsters at, at Camel Plan. Here's another example of what we just spoke about. This is a chart to show $50,000 invested at a 10% rate of return over 40 years in a 30% tax bracket. So you have your dark blue or your traditional or your dark blue or your taxable income, your dark, normal W-2 salary. Then you have your light green, the tax deferred or traditional IRAs, the SEP IRAs, simple IRAs. And then the dark green, which is your Roth IRAs, your post-tax accounts. So over 40 years, you can see that the, the taxation is a little bit different. However, at the very end, um, the W-2 uh, funds only earned $700,000, whereas it's important to note that both the traditional or tax deferred funds and the tax-free funds both earned $2.2 million. However, the ta tax-deferred account paid $700,000 in taxes when they went to take it out of the account. So obviously you see another reason why I'm a little bit partial to the Roth IRAs. 
So what can you invest into with your self-directed IRAs? It's not just stocks, bonds, mutual funds, like a lot of people are used to. These, all the, these are the alternative investments you can actually dive into. So a lot of our clients, and we'll touch on these a, a little bit in more depth in the future slides, but a lot of our clients do real estate, their IRAs own properties. A lot of people do private lending. Some people invest into private placements. Some people's uh, IRAs with us own gold, silver, palladium, and other precious metals. And then we have the other section. There are people that invest into tax liens. Some people invest into cryptocurrencies. Some people invest into, hey, I've seen people buy bees and sell honey. I've seen people buy trees and sell fruit. There are a lot of options with a self-directed IRA, and they're really flexible. So to go in a little bit more information about each of those, I'm a lot of us are real estate investors and, and like real estate. So when you're investing with your IRA, it can actually own property. It could be single family. It could be multifamily. It could be commercial. You can buy plots of land, undeveloped plots of land. Um, however, the process works is when you go, when you use your retirement funds to purchase a property, it's not you that's the owner of the property. It's the IRA, which is a separate entity from you, similar to a trust. So when you go out and you get a, that agreement of sale, the purchaser of that property, again, it's not you. It wouldn't be me, William Mucker, as the owner. It would be Camaplan, FBO, William Mucker, IRA or Roth IRA, whatever type of account I had. Um, and that would be the owner of the property. Again, a separate entity similar to a trust in a lot of ways. Um, you would get that agreement of sale. Initial next to the signature line for the IRA. Send that into Camaplan. Um, the initials let us know that you've read and approved of the agreement. We'll process everything within two business days and facilitate that transaction, sign on behalf of the IRA as third-party administrator and send the funds out to the title company for the purchase. Uh, another, And we can talk about real estate a little bit extra as well, but to, just to go through these in general, we have private lending. So you can be, think of this as the borrower and the lender. So if you're raising money, um, the average investor has seven times the amount of funds available in their retirement fund retirement funds than they do in their discretionary funds. So if you're working with somebody as a lender, um, let them know that they can use their self-directed IRA as well. So your IRA can lend money. It can be, it can be a secure note, can be unsecured, secured to a property, make it a mortgage. Um, there are convertible notes where you can um, lend money to a company. And then years later, that can convert into shares of the company. You don't have to originate the note. You can buy the notes on the secondary. Your IRA can buy the notes on a secondary market. There are a number of options. Same thing as what we talked about with the with the real estate transaction. The lender on the note is not you. It's the IRA, separate entity, similar to your trust. That lender is Camaplan, FBO, your name, IRA, or Roth IRA. You and the borrower sign on the promissory note, send that into Camaplan. We'll process it within two business days and send the funds to the borrower. And then another, uh, probably the, actually one of the most common investments that came plan are private placements, probably because they're, they're very passive. Um, before Apple or, or Google, or should I say Alphabet, any of those companies went public, you couldn't buy them on the stock market. So what you would have to do is invest into them through these private placements. Um, they usually have a subscription agreement. Uh, on this, that subscription agreement, you guessed it, the IRA is the subscriber. Um, you buy shares of the company out of your IRA, and then you earn interest in dividend payments. There's LLCs, LPs, corporations, hedge funds, investment clubs, different options al along the lines of that. And then another investment category that some people do to diversify their portfolio, their retirement portfolio in specific, is your IRA can also own metals. They can own, it can hold, it can hold gold, silver, palladium, platinum, and there's also a, a metal called the precious metals composite, which is a composite of those four metals and certain coins like U.S. Eagles um, can be owned by your IRA as well. And we'll go into a little bit more details because we're about to talk about the investments you can't make out of the IRA. Um, and it actually touches on gold and silver and, and things along the lines of that. So we talked about some things that your IRA can invest into. Now, what can't you invest with? So mainly it's hard to value assets that the IRS doesn't want you to invest into. So these are collectibles and life insurance mainly. So works of art, you can throw paint on a canvas and somebody can say that's worth $2 million where I might say it's worth $2 because I don't know anything about art. Um, there's rugs, um, antiques, metals, gems. We mentioned metals, but I'll talk about that in a second. 
stamps, coins, any collectibles, beverages, wine, whiskey. You can't buy that in your IRA. However, you can invest into companies that deal with these investment classes. You just can't directly, own, your IRA can't directly own these objects. And then at the bottom, there's the exception for the U.S. government minted gold or silver eagles or palladium bullions. Um, that's what their, their clients invest into with their IRAs. You can't just buy, you know, any metal out of the IRA. And we can talk more about that as well if anybody has any questions. Um, but a good thing to talk about when you're talking about prohibited transactions or precious metals is um, disqualified persons. So when you're working with an IRA, another big rule is there's no self-dealing dealing and no personal use. So if your IRA, and this, this comes across a lot with real estate, so it's important to note, if your IRA were to own a property, you as the account holder are prohibited from receiving a direct benefit to the IRA and its investments as well as providing direct benefit to the IRA and its investments. So for example, you go out and your IRA buys a property, 123 Main Street. The property is, is in the account as an asset. You as the account holder cannot stay in the property at all, and you cannot work on the property at all. You can pick the color of the paint, but you can't go in there with a paintbrush and paint the walls. Again, it has to be an arm's length trans transaction strictly for investment purposes to grow your retirement plan. Um, and there are other disqualified persons other than the account holder themselves that would fall into this. Um, now, on the side of metals, just because I made the note earlier, if your IRA to purchase, were to purchase metals, you can't personally hold those metals in your house. So they have to be stored in a secured depository, a neutral third party, um, where they would hold the physical bullions or coins. So that's another thing to note. And then other disqualified persons other than the account holder are ba basically anybody of lineal ascent or descent of the account holders, including their spouse and any entity that these people own 50% or more of um, or have managing power of are prohibited from receiving a direct benefit from the IRA and its investments, as well as providing a direct benefit to the IRA and its investments. So um, you can't hire your son's uh, painting company to go in there and paint the walls. How uh, it, the IRS wants, because you're not paying taxes on the income earned by the property, the IRA wants you to go out and pay somebody who's going to charge a competitive price that will have to pay taxes on the income they earn from that work um, to do the work. Uh, as I noted, anybody in blue is disqualified. However, the people in green are okay. So it's, like I said, it's linear, ascent, or descent. However, lateral relationships like aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, nieces, and nephews, they're all okay. So you can lend to your, your siblings, you can lend to your nephews excuse me, your IRA can lend to your siblings, your IRA can lend to your nieces and nephews, your cousins, aunts, uncles, and even your um, aunts and uncles and cousins and, and brothers and sisters and all that good stuff. So what does the process look like? It's actually pretty quick and I can give you the timeline for everything. The way it works is the first step would be opening up an account online. It takes about 15 minutes, a quick and easy process. Uh, and I can even walk you through it if you'd like. Uh, then you fund the account. The way you can fund the account are, is one of three ways, either through contribution, like we're all familiar with. You can also transfer from IRA to IRA. And then if you want to use an employer plan, and uh, an old employer plan from a former employer, you can do a rollover from a 401k into an IRA. Um, the way that works is you would have to initiate with your plan administrator, and then they would send the funds to CAM plan. If you're doing from an IRA, we can actually request those funds on your behalf. Well, where I said the, the application takes about 15 minutes. Um, funding the account is, there's a lot of more factors that go into it. On average, we tell people to expect about two weeks for that to take place because um, the factors that go into it are processing timelines, the other custodians processing timelines, uh, how they're sending the funds. Do they need to liquidate the funds? Do the funds need to settle after liquidation? Um, and if they're sending it via check and wire. So there are a lot of um, factors that go into it, but on average, it's about two weeks. Then you choose the investment that, that's right for you. So you go out, you identify a borrower, you go out, you identify a property that you want to own within your IRA. Um, you get the paperwork, you gather it together, different investment, um, investment classes have different supporting paperwork. Like I said, with the, uh, um, the real estate would have an agreement of sale and, and, um, an asset purchase directive, which is our form. With lending, you would have a promissory note and the asset purchase directive. Um, precious metals, there's a precious metals directive and an invoice. Send that into CAMA plan. We process all transactions, whether it be reviewing an application, uh, sending out a tr transfer paperwork, doing a purchase, doing a distribution, making a payment for an existing asset, 
All transactions within Camo Plan are processed within two business days of receiving paperwork in good order. Once the funds are received by your investment provider, then the investment is active, deposit the profits, and then you can rinse and repeat. So why do you need Camo Plan? What do we do? What are we here for? So the IRS actually requires that you have a third party facilitate transactions and keep record of the transactions within your IRA. We're a neutral third party. We do um, the reporting and record keeping for the IRAs. Um, we sp specialize in traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, and the facilitation of those transactions. And then we're a part of your core team of professionals. In this disclosure, I told you that if um, you want to talk to your tax professional, you want to talk to your advisor, um, and you want to go over anything with us, we're more than happy to be a part of that dialogue. Um, a lot of advisors I've, I've spoken to in the past, um, even some advisors aren't very well educated on this, and we're more than happy to speak with them. Um, so, um, yeah, get us on the phone together. Um, we'll, we're more than happy to, to help wherever we can throughout the transaction. These are some frequently asked questions that we can dive into. And if these trigger any questions after the presentation, please ask them. I'm, I'm happy to answer questions. I love doing these presentations. Um, so the, one of the main questions I get is what is the timeline to open the, inf open the account and fund the account about 15 minutes to open the account online. We went over that and to fund the account takes about two two weeks on average, but we process everything on our, our end within two business days. So it's mainly the other custodians processing timelines we're waiting on. How do you fund the account and how long does that take? Um, funding the account, like I said, you have the options of transfer via another IRA, rollover from an employer plan or cash contribution. Um, you just follow the contribution rules given the, the specific type of account you open and, and the contribution limits. Um, another question is walk me through how I invest in an asset through a self-directed IRA. So once the account's been opened and it's been funded via transfer rollover contribution, like I mentioned earlier, then you find the investment that's right for you. Let's say you find a borrower, you guys would draw up a promissory note. We don't, we don't draw up the notes because again, we're not attorneys. You probably wouldn't want us to draw up the note. So the note would show the IRA is a lender. You can have security paperwork, like a mortgage attached to it. Um, once you've done that, you've agreed to the terms, you and the borrower will sign off on that on that promissory note, send that in a camera plan with our direction of investment form, which is our camera plan asset purchase directives, it's just a two page form that tells us what you're investing in, how much you're investing, how much money or how you'd like the money sent and where we're sending it. We'll process that within two business days and send the funds to the investment provider. And then you'll be able to log into your online portal, see those assets um, there's investments that, as assets within the account. You can submit payment requests through the online portal, submit distribution requests, all of that good stuff. We're very online and, uh, and uh, online friendly, and we can also accept paperwork via email. So whatever works best for you. Now, who signs the paperwork when I invest? So this varies. Mainly, it's going to be us. You initial next to the signature line for the IRA. That lets us know as a custodian that you've read and approved of the agreement that we're signing off on. Uh, and then we'll sign on behalf of the third-party administrator for your IRA. Um, however, the only investment that's a little bit different is with the promissory note or, or private lending that we went over with Cama Plan. Um, we view those as more of an agreement between the borrower and the account holder. So we don't sign those. Um, we just make sure that it's titled correctly. You and the borrower would sign off and send that into Camo Plan, and you would sign the asset purchase directive, and then we would facilitate it that way. A big question that a lot of people come into Camo Plan and they're hoping for is, can I use my IRA for the down payment of property I want to own personally? We went over the disqualified transactions a little bit earlier, the prohibited transactions, should I say. The IRA can only pay for what whatever expenses based off the percentage it owns of the investment. So for example, you can partner your IRA with your different with different entities. You can partner it with your personal funds, believe it or not. Whereas your IRA is a part owner, you're personally a part owner, you can partner it with your own funds, um, a disqualified person's funds. Um, you can partner it with um, another person's IRA. You can partner it with any other entity. However, whatever percentage the IRA owns of that investment is the percentage of all expenses it can pay, including down payment, purchase price, utility bills, renovations, 
uh, and it's and whatever percentage it owns is the percentage of all return it's entitled to. So any rental income um, or the eventual sale of the property would have to go back to the IRA. It could be 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30, doesn't matter, whatever percentage works best. Uh, it's just gonna only pay those that percentage of expenses and return uh, and is entitled that percentage of return. But regardless of the percentage it owns, whether your partner or IRA, if you want to do it that way, which is a strategy a lot of people use, if you're partnering with another IRA or if you're partnering with your IRA with your personal funds, even if your IRA only owns 1% of the property and you own 99%, you still can't stay in the property all at all. You can still can't work at, in the property, ugh, still can't work on the property at all. Um, just because the IRA only owns 1% and you own 99% of the property doesn't mean you can stay in it 99% of the time or do 99% of the work. It doesn't matter. You still have to follow the prohibited transactions guidelines to their full extent. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to mess with prohibited transactions, um, because it blows up your IRA and it's not worth it. And you're making a lot of money without doing it. So if you avoid that, um, you're golden. Uh, another question we get is, can my IRA receive a loan to purchase a property? So actually, yes, your IRA can receive financing for properties that they want to purchase. Um, however, it has to be through what's called a non-recourse loan. For those of you who aren't familiar with non-recourse loans, what non-recourse loans is, first off, the, the loan is being made directly to the account holder. It's being made to the IRA. So you as the account holder can't personally guarantee that loan. So um, there's usually a, a little bit more requirements that the, the lenders usually want more money down from the IRA in these situations. And you can talk to a number of different non-recourse lenders that are out there to get the exact requirements they have for these loans. Um, and also as a non-recourse loan, if the IRA were to default on a payment on that loan, the only recourse the lender has is to go after usually the specific property that the loan is attached to or at most go after what's in the specific IRA the loan was made to. If you had other accounts at Camo Plan, they couldn't go into your other accounts at Camo Plan. They couldn't go into your other retirement plans outside of Camo Plan, and they couldn't go after your personal belongings. Their only recourse is made, is within that specific IRA the loan was made to. So that's another reason why these requirements different differ from your standard financing options. Uh, another thing to take note of when you're looking to get financing for a property that you're looking uh, that you're looking to buy with your IRA, usually IRAs don't pay taxes, but in some instances they do, which we'll also go over in a, a future slide. Um, usually IRAs don't pay taxes; they're tax sheltered accounts. But there is a tax. There's two different taxes: UBIT and UDFI. Specifically for this scenario, we're talking about the tax called UDFI. It stands for Unrelated Debt Finance Income. That gets triggered whenever you decide to get financing for a property or an investment you're trying to make with your IRA. Um, the specifics of what you have to pay with that with that tax, you'd have to talk over with your, with your CPA, but we'll go over a little bit more about how the, the actual process with these taxes being paid um, are handled. But it's not very common that we see these taxes being paid. Usually people that end up paying these, these taxes, the UBIT or UDFI, are happy with it because they'd be paying taxes outside of the account anyway, and they're using their IRA to to grow their retirements. Fan, to cry, they're using the IRA to grow their retirement funds quicker than they would be on the stock market, so they're usually fine with the taxes in the event that they do. It's not very common, but it does happen. Can I manage the property my IRA owns? Another popular question. Manage is kind of a vague term. Um, now you can pick your tenants. You can pick the color of the paint on the wall. You just can't go in there with a paintbrush. So um, there are a number of different ways people handle the, uh, uh, for example, real estate when their IRA owns it. There's a number of ways, different ways you can structure it. Um, mainly it's three different ways we'll go over. If you lo were looking to own an, a real estate property within your IRA and avoid any prohibited transactions, um, one way is you can do it directly out of the IRA. You don't have to involve anybody else. Um, once you purchase the property, you can submit all payment requests directly through the online portal. You can set up what's called a blanket payment authorization with Cama Plan for recurring expenses. Like let's say your IRA owns a property and you have, you have utility bills coming in on a monthly basis. You can set up a blanket payment that covers these utility bills 
and have your your uh, your provider send those bills directly to Camaplan. And as long as we have that blanket payment authorization on file that covers that specific utility bill and we receive that bill, we'll go ahead and pay those expenses directly out of the IRA with the available cash that you have in there. Um, you can do all of that directly through the IRA. You don't have to have any other parties involved. And it's and we again, we process a lot of these requests within two business days, a lot of times within one business day of receiving them. So there's not much wait time. Um, the second option you can do is you can hire a property manager. Um if you hire a property manager, it's providing a service to the IRA. So the IRA has to pay for that property manager. The property manager can be hired for specific management of that specific uh, uh, property held by the IRA. That property manager can open up a separate bank account for that property where it can collect any rental income and use it to pay for any expenses. It cannot commingle any other funds inside of that bank account. It can't put any personal funds or any outside funds into that account. It can only be specific IRA funds intended for that investment. You can't, like I said, no contributions and no distributions from that account. Um, and usually people return funds or profits from that account either quarterly or annually back to the IRA. Um, but again, the IRA has to has to pay that person to do the management. And it can't be a disqualified person like your, like your, um, like your son or your father. They can't be your property manager. Um, and then the third option, um, it's Less common, but we do have clients that do it. It's through an entity called a checkbook LLC. For those who have never heard of a checkbook LLC, um, what it is, is it's an LLC that you have established by an attorney who sets it up where the managing member of that um, LLC is the IRA, that Camo Plan FBO, your name IRA. Um, you set it up as the managing member, um, put it on the operating agreement, send that into Camo Plan with our asset purchase directive. Meanwhile, um, you have a business checking account established for that LLC, and then we can fund that LLC, that checking account directly from the IRA. And then you can use that to have checkbook control over the investments you make. Um, however, we can't see what you're investing in. So you have to be extra sure that you're following the prohibited transaction guidelines and not um, doing anything that would, would affect your IRA negatively. Um, and there are there. Are, different opinions on the, on the self or the checkbook LLC. Some people say, um, some people say that they're not going to be around forever. Some people say that the lawsuit that originally allowed um, the checkbook LLCs, I believe it was Swanson versus the IRS, that lawsuit, the prosecuting attorneys didn't use everything they could have to overturn the verdict. And if it ever goes back to, to uh, court again, it might be overturned. Um, but the benefit is you get the checkbook control. You don't have to wait for us to process the transactions, even though we're very quick with it. Um, that's the third option that you can use. But uh, again, we can't see what you're investing in. So make sure you're following the prohibited transactions guidelines. And then you have to report to us the value of those investments at the end of every year um, so that we can do the necessary reporting to the IRS. Another question, and the last frequently asked question I have, I'm sure a lot of people have other questions and we do have a few other slides to go over. Um, what do I do if and when there is a capital call or if I have to make an installment payment on a loan that my IRA is making? Um, so what will happen is when you do the asset purchase directive and you submit the um, investment paperwork, um, there will be a section where it says total investment amount and amount to be sent out of account. You, the total investment amount is the total in, uh, price of the investment over the longevity of the investment that you expected having. So if you're lending $100,000, but the initial contribution is $25,000, then you would mark $25,000 as the amount to be sent out of the account and $100,000 the, as the total investment amount. We'll send the $25,000 out. Then you'll be able to see that asset in your online portal. And from your online portal, you can submit payments for existing assets. So if you ever have an installment payment or if you're in a fund that has a capital call, what you'll do is you'll log in, you'll submit a payment request Select it as an additional funding for an existing asset. Attach a copy of the capital call or the initial note um, that shows the installment payments, and then we'll go go ahead and process that. A lot of times, those transactions are processed within a business day of them being submitted. So, um, one of the last things we'll go over are tax considerations and different resources that you can use. Um, I'm not a tax professional. I said this at the beginning, so I don't know much about this. I just know it from the IRA's um, perspective. So, like I said, IRAs usually don't pay taxes. 
Um, they're tax sheltered accounts. They're the main bet. That's the main benefit of these retirement accounts. Um, however, in some instances, they do. Those two instances are UBTI and UDFI. A lot of people also refer to it as UBIT. Um, UBIT is unrelated business income tax. Um, so what triggers uh, UBIT? What I've seen trigger UBIT are two things. Um, it mainly means that the IRS thinks you're running a business out of your IRA. So one thing is flipping properties. Now, what the, the IRS constitutes or what the IRS um, def, IRS's definition of a flip is, they'll never say. Some people say, oh, you can do one a year and you're fine. Some people say, oh, if you hold it for this long, you're fine. Or if you do this many a year, you're fine. But those people, none of them are the IRS and the IRS will never say. So it's important to talk with your tax professional to see if what you're doing constitu- or, um, requires a UBIT payment. Um, the IRS looks at the properties that you're flipping as inventory in and inventory out of the IRA. So they say, hey, you're running a business and you have to pay us taxes. Um, it's the same thing with UDFI. If people that pay it are usually fine with it because they're paying taxes outside of the IRA if they were to do it that way anyway. And they're still making more money than they are on the stock market. So um, there are benefits to it, I guess. Um, another thing that triggers UBIT or unrelated business income tax is developing on undeveloped land. So your IRA can purchase plots of land, undeveloped land. And then if you say, hey, uh, I don't want to just sit on this this plot of land anymore. I actually want to build on it. Um, If your IRA goes out and pays a developer to develop on that plot of land, that would trigger the UBIT tax because the IRA says, hey, the IRS says, hey, your IRA is building on on a plot of land. That's a business. You're going to have to pay us taxes. So if your IRA has to pay one of these taxes, um, you take it with, to your tax professional, they would file a form 990T, tell us how much the IRA has to pay. You would send that into Camel Plan. We would sign the form 990T and send those funds for taxes out of the IRA directly to the IRS. And then we talked briefly about UDFI on a previous slide. UDFI, as I've said, is unrelated debt financed income. And that's whenever you're receiving financing for a property owned um, within the IRA. Um, same process as if you had to pay pay UBIT, Form 990T, send that into CAMA plan, and we would pay those taxes. But don't let that stop you. Again, a lot of people are okay with those taxes, and it's not very common that you, that you run into them. It's only in through those specific scenarios. So out of what we've spoken about so far, this is where we've got all that information. So um, we didn't pull this out of thin air. This is directly from the IRS websites, different court cases, um, IRS publications. So if you want to prove us wrong or if you're having trouble sleeping at night, keep one of these by your bedside. bedside. I'm sure that will help you. Um, and yeah, none of this was pulled out of thin air. You can look it all up and I'd be happy to talk about it more in depth with you. Here we now I'm going to talk about a little about a little bit about camo plan so you get to know us a little bit more. I would have done this at the beginning of the presentation, but I wanted to get directly into um, I wouldn't, don't want to say the fun stuff, but the actionable stuff, but just to prove more so that we're not making this stuff up. Camel plan has been in the business of self-direction for actually next year will be our 20th year in business. Um, If it's for investors buy investors. So the people that founded the company, which we'll go over next are real estate investors. Our fees are flexible to make sure that depending on the value of your account, you're able to pay um, the minimum. We have two different options that you're free to switch from Um, at any time, depending on what's cheapest for you, and you're never locked in. Um, It started small as a regional firm. We're we're located about 40 minutes outside of um, Philadelphia in a suburb called Ambler. Um, This is our building to the right-hand side. It's a a beautiful building. The owners renovated themselves. It used to to be the police station. We still have um, the cells um, in the basement where we keep all the interns when they act up. (laughs) And um, yeah, it used to be used to be a police station. Before that, it was a post office, and then recently, Camo Plan bought it out, and that's where we're mainly headquartered. We have offices in Florida and other satellite offices around the country. We have clients all over the country, and we pride ourselves on elite customer service. So when you call into Camo Plan, you're not going to be on hold for an hour. I would be surprised if you're on hold for five minutes. To be honest, um, we have a live receptionist that's going to pick up your call ask you what your question is, and they're going to direct you directly to the best person able to assist you. 
Um, all of our representatives are cross-trained, but most likely you're going to speak directly to the person that's going to be processing your transaction and say you have another question about that specific transaction. You're not going to have to re-explain yourself to a bunch of different representatives because most likely you're going to end up talking to that same person that you initially talked to because we like to keep it a, a little bit more of a personal experience so you don't have to do go through that, that hassle of talking to 20 different people just to get one answer. And then we've talked about it a number of times through the presentation. We're one of the quickest in the industry. We pride ourselves on proper record keeping and educating our clients to make sure that they're not doing prohibited transactions as best as we can, not being um, CPAs or attorneys like that. But we process everything very quickly. We, Whenever we receive paperwork in good order, you have two business days and most likely that transaction is going to be processed. Um, a lot of times I see transactions going out within one business day. Um, so you're not going to be waiting us for much of anything. And that's all transactions, whether it's reviewing your new account, whether it's, um, sending funds to the other or sending a request to the other custodian for your transfer, um, posting funds, um, purchase paperwork distributions, two business days, and it's going to be done assuming the paperwork's in good order, which will, will help you make sure that's the case. So these are the people that founded um, Cama Plan. They're the Cama of the Cama Plan. You got Carl Fisher and Maggie Palisano. Um, they're siblings. They're real estate investors. They grew up in a real estate investing um, family. Carl is a former NASA rocket scientist. So when he does these presentations, he likes to. He's he's the only one that can actually tell you it. It's not rocket scientist science when you're doing this. Um, he's an expert on, on self-directed IRAs. He goes around the country speaking to different professionals and, and investors about the benefits of self-direction. Um, he's a co-author of a number of different publications. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why he can't be here today. And it, he, you're stuck with me. Um, he's at another event doing, doing another, another uh, a number of speaking opportunities. And then Maggie Palisano, she's a, a co-founder of Cama Plan. Um, she grew up in the same real estate investing family. So again, by investors for investors is what we like to say. Um, she's a real estate investor extraordinaire and she um, she's an ex expert in information technology. Um, so yeah, that's the Cama of Cama Plan. You got the CA from Carl and the MA from Maggie. That's where you get Cama Plan. And lastly, one of the things I want to offer to everybody here today is if you scan the code below, this will take you to a direct link um, that will um, let us know that you were in the presentation today when you open the account. Usually our application fee is $75. However, uh, for anybody in the presentation today, we're gonna, we're gonna slice that down to $1. Um, and recently Cama Plan has been selected as the preferred self-directed custodian of the national RIA. So a number, another of other benefits we're gonna provide to people on this presentation today and other Boston RIA members and RIA members across the country. Um, if you use this link, you let us know that you were in the presentation today. We're going to, we're going to reduce that application fee to $1. Um, you're going to have VIP service for a year. You're going to get two free outgoing wires. You're going to get a free expedited transaction. I mean, expedited, I mean, all of our transactions are pretty expedited, but if you need it done in one day guaranteed um, and you get us the paperwork, we'll help expedite and put you in front of the line. Um, one free expedited transaction. And then you can also speak to our own, one of our owners, Carl Fisher, um, at any time. Uh, if you have any questions about anything we talked about today, you don't want to ask it in the meeting, you want to um, talk over a specific scenario, you want me to walk you through the application. I'm always happy to take calls and emails. I love talking about this stuff, hearing what people are trying to do. Uh, I learn a lot from you guys. So if you want to talk to me, here's my contact information. If you want to have any questions about the deal we're offering, um, please scan the, scan the code, email me, call me. I'm more than happy to help um, anybody. I kind of flew, that, flew through that a little bit quicker than I planned on it. Um, but uh, if now's a good time, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to take any questions from, from anybody in the presentation. Let's see, are there any questions in the chat? Yes, William. Hi, we've got um, 
a question here from Jim, Jim S. He's wanting to know, is it possible to purchase a property at auction with an, with a, an S D I R A? If so, how is the bank check required to bid handled? Yeah, great question, Jim. So um, I see somebody mentioned the checkbook IRA option. That's one way you can go about it. Um, or checkbook LLC option. That's one way people do go about it. Another way is um, for people that are buying properties at auction, uh, if you don't want to have an LLC established to do that, we can actually send you a check. You give us an amount that you're, you're looking to bid and we'll send you a check for that amount. Um, you just set, submit an asset purchase directive beforehand. Let us know that's for a share of sale or an auction. Um, put the amount on the asset purchase directive. Um, tell us how you want the check sent to you, and then we'll send that to you. We'll overnight it to you, however you like it. Uh, you take that to the auction, use that check, and then you can return whatever whatever the difference is back to the IRA if you don't want to go the route of the checkbook LLC. But it is something a lot of clients do, and I have seen before. But great question. Yes, very good question. And I actually have a question myself, William. Um, what what is the minimum amount, again, to... I know it's one dollar, but um, it what's the the smallest amount you can have in your account uh, to start? Yeah, great question. So um, we don't have any minimums. Uh, the only thing that you can really look at as a as a minimum for us is uh, you don't pay any fees other than the application fee until you make your investment. However, um, if it's a cash only account. And it's under forty, or excuse me, under four thousand dollars. At the end of a year, um, at the end of every year, you'll have to pay a fifty dollar maintenance fee. But other than that, if it's above four thousand dollars, there's no maintenance fee, and you don't pay anything until you make your investment. Um, we also do have a required minimum balance once the account has been invested, and that's just two years worth of uh, the annual record keeping fee for the account, which can be as low as. Um, uh, as, as low as $350 of cash that you should need to leave in the account. But that's not a fee. That's just a balance that needs to be maintained. And then you take that with you when you leave. Gotcha. Thank you for answering that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Thank you for the question. I'm, I'm uh, buzzing Duncan right now. Everybody, Duncan is in Tunisia. <laughs> and so his, his uh, reception it is choppy and uh, he's having problems logging, logging back in. Uh, do we have any more questions from the room? Yeah, um, I, I completely understand. Uh, I can talk for a little bit too while people are thinking of questions. Um, another thing I, I didn't note is if you're with a custodian now that that's, you're not happy with or you want to give Cam a plan a try, you can still capitalize, this, capitalize on this offer. Um, we'll still honor it. We'll help you transfer your, your assets in kind or, or transfer your cash. Um, and, uh, you'll still get the deal, the, the expedited service, um, the two free wires, the one free X, the one free expedited transaction, the VIP service and all of that good stuff. Um, so, um, I'm happy to take any questions. Give me, give me a scenario that you're running through in your head, what you're looking to do. Um, and we can go through it together. Or if you want to take it offline, my contact information is there as well. And we can talk today or tomorrow whatever works best for you uh thank you i'm back i had, had had a little connection problem i'm sorry for that but i am here um super super information um so i'm just if we have any other questions in here real quick um stay with question. me um oh we do have a question duncan from george yeah, go right ahead yeah mm -hmm. hi um hi george how you doing Good, thank you. The question that I have is, can you invest in a stock market through this um, platform? Great question. So um, we're not brokers, so we can't deal with any publicly traded assets. We don't sell anything. We don't have any mutual funds. So the strategy a lot of people will use, we only deal with the alternative investments like the real estate and the private lending. What a lot of people do, the strategy they'll use is they'll They'll have their account at Schwab or Fidelity or Vanguard, keep it in the stock market until they're ready to make a deal. And then when a deal comes through, they'll have the account established at Camaplan already. And what they'll do is a transfer from that um, account they have invested in the stock market 
over to Camaplan for their alternative investments. When that deal closes, they'll and and they're in between deals and they they don't have another alternative investment to do, they'll transfer back out. Um, and then, you know, rinse and repeat. There are no limitations to how many transfers you can do in a given year. Um, and we again we process everything within two business days, so we can move money pretty quick. We're not a lot of custodians are very sentimental with other people's money and they try to hold on to it as long as possible, but it's your money. So you deserve it whenever you need it. So we'll, we'll process that within two business days and get that where it needs to go. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for the question, George. Okay. Um, um, let's see, I think, um, one second here. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Jim's about... question has been answered, Duncan. Yeah, okay. Um, checkbook IRA, do we answer that one? Uh, is there a question yes. about checkbook IRA? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah that was Jim's question, but it looks like Janice uh, had a also comment asked, as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Very, very organized. Thanks, William. I sold my family home in Milton in August. Always great to see. What is happening in Boston? Absolutely, my pleasure, Janice. I appreciate the the time and 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 lending me your time and listening to what I have to say. Um, and I'm always happy to 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 educate wh whoever I can uh, and answer any questions. So I appreciate the kind words. Yes, awesome. very concise. Uh, yes, thank and you. thank you, William, for the the offer, uh, guys. I am going to put this up uh, as a replay. If you do want to watch it uh, again, or the best I ask you is to get hold of William, uh, either email uh, or his uh, phone number. They are there to help you. And uh, uh, special to offer an account is a fabulous deal. Um, so if they want to, is it make sense for them to transfer from another company at all, uh, William? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're with... Um... A broker right now, like the the Vanguard Fidelities and Schwab's and TD Ameritrade's. Actually, I think TD Ameritrade just got bought out by Schwab. But um, if you're with any of those companies with brokers and you want to transfer in, it's it's quick and easy. I can help you with it. Again, I, I help people open accounts all the time. So if you want me to to hold your hand through the transactions, through opening the account, funding the account, just call in, ask for Will. I'm your guy. I'm more than happy to help. Um, now, if you're with another self-directed custodian, whether you're invested with them or not, yet or if it's just cash or there's assets i'll help you walk you through the process of moving over um in kind assets if you have an asset with another self-directed custodian and and you're not happy there or, or you want to give camo plan a try um you won't pay any annual fees until the following year after the asset has been moved over because we only charge our fees annually and you can always change that fee schedule um based off what's cheapest at you at and what's cheapest for you at, at any time even after we've invoiced you just it's a one page form. You can do it online if you want to switch from one fee schedule to the other. Um, so yeah, it makes sense whether you're with a self-directed custodian or if you're with, you're invested into the stock market with your IRA or 401k. Um, we're more than happy to help you through that transaction. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. If there's no other questions, I'm just going to uh, end the meeting here tonight. Um, so again, thank you very much. I wish you um, all a happy new year. New year. Oh, sorry um, to cut you again, off. There does, there does seem to be one question, if, if you oh, don't mind go me right answering ahead. it before yeah, the no, end. Go right ahead. So, so Janice asked, can you move assets without selling them, like real estate assets? Uh, I'll go over that real quickly. I'm, I'm sorry to cut off the ending, but I did, didn't want to yeah, make sure the question got answered. Um, so if you have assets other than cash with a self-directed custodian, you can absolutely move them over without selling them. We refer, refer to them as in-kind um, transfers. That means you're transferring assets other than cash. So the way it works is if you're with other custodian, you own a property, the current owner of that property is the your IRA at that custodian. So it's something along the lines of ABC company, FBO, your name IRA. If you wanted to move it over to Camaplan, it's the camo plan IRA is a separate entity from that IRA. So what will happen is you need to work with your title company or um, the investment provider of the specific asset you want to move over and have them retitle that agreement or um, ownership from that uh, company's IRA to camo plans, IRA camo plan, FBO, your name, IRA, and then report to us the value of that asset at the time you want to do the transfer We'll take those documents and the transfer form you've completed, and we can walk you through that process. 
We'll take those documents, send that request over to your current custodian, um, letting them know that you would like to release those assets over to your account of camo plan. Um, and yeah, we'll process that within two business days, walk you through that transaction, hold your hand if you want. And, uh, and uh, yeah, you can move the assets other than cash as well. You don't need to sell them first. Excellent. Awesome. Great Thank question, you, Janice. Janice. Question. Yes, great Thank question. You. Yeah, it was. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we look forward to you uh, seeing you again in the new year. If uh, you have not become yet a member, please do so. It is a tax write-off, so you might as well get that uh, out of the way and uh, get into all the goodies. Again, here's another no-brainer reason. You get a, a new account for $1 instead of $75. It just comes by being a uh, member of Boston Rea. So, um another great uh, benefit for you to save money. So again, uh, text Kelly 864-906-411 and she'll get you sorted out or find us online and um, get a hold of William and we'll see you in the new year. Please uh, look out for your emails as we have uh, other other things that we'll, st we'll still be announcing during this time. That, that's uh, all. Uh, thanks everyone and have a great day. Thank, Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks for Bye. showing up. Thank right. you. Bye.